into the box. He Oh, he's taken down hard. No penalty. And there's a shot by Rafinha, who had drifted in to the middle. Fourth goal of the season. Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back to the channel. I do appreciate the support you guys have been giving to the series thus far. I am going to ask for some feedback. And there's a specific reason. Uh, so we've had mostly 20 plus views on every episode, which is great. It's about double uh, to trip to double what we got last year and triple what we were getting at the end of last year. Uh, you know, because things normally trend down. But I was noticing, so I have, what, 576 followers, subscribers here, and I know the bulk of them are not active. But I was noticing some of the newer creators uh, are getting around 200 followers, subscribers on their channel, and they're getting 50 and 60 views on their videos and being a more established creator uh, that has kind of set me back a little bit that you know so these newer creators already have more views on their channel than i do in my fourth year so really give me some feedback as to you know what and, and don't hold don't pull your punches i mean be honest with me let me know what you think are some of the shortcomings of my channel uh what i'm doing wrong in the content is it in the editing just whatever you know i mean don't be ugly and rude but you know be honest with me because because i am looking for ways to improve and really seeing newer creators coming on board and quickly you know in their first year out distancing me by leaps and bounds has really set me back and made me wonder uh, you know, am I just wasting my time? Am I just not, uh, you know, not the right guy to be doing football manager content? You know, for, for lack of a better way to phrase that, I guess. So looking for some feedback from you guys. And, you know, if you're, if you're willing to, if you're watching to even see this, you know, you're who I want feedback from because you're the one taking time out of your day to watch my content, which I do appreciate. So I trust you to give me good feedback uh, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm putting up the, you know, we are the community and what's weird is I'm putting that up, but I never see me getting retweeted by anybody else. Uh, even though I have a lot of followers on Twitter, I've been following people on Twitter. I've been liking their posts and you know it's just you know so i'm just kind of looking to see is it something i'm doing is it because i'm an american and a lot of these guys are uh, are european english for the most part uh does that play a role if it does so be it i mean that's you know i mean i can't change that but you know i'm just kind of looking I've, I've been spending about the last week kind of looking at different things and uh, so today I thought was the right time to kind of bring that to light and, and ask for some guidance and advice from you guys. So thank you in advance for, for any feedback that you have for me. Let's get into today's match. We are in the middle, nearing the end of the transfer window. We do have some transfers to go through. Uh, you can see we are back in a slump of form uh, after we were defeated by Aston Villa last episode, a 1-1 draw to Man, Man United. Uh, Jack Harrison got the goal for us there. Southampton, a 2-0 defeat. I uh, t played with a new tactic in this one, and it didn't go well. Brighton, a 0-0 draw, and Brentford, a 1-1 draw. Jamie Shackleton got the goal. And yes, I was supposed to come back for Brentford and Bournemouth. I get into a groove of playing matches, and sometimes I just miss the uh, the game I'm supposed to come back for. So uh, anyway, we're back for Bournemouth. We'll do Man City today. Let's jump into the transfers and take a look at what has happened there as of late. And that would be here in January. So uh, Oliver Casey goes out on loan. We pick up a monthly fee of $2,200 for him. 
Uh, Jan Emmers, this is one of the guys we brought in at the beginning of the season for 400000 We could not get his work permit, so we've gone ahead and moved him on to Jan Buck for 350000 We take a $50,000 bath, but we get his salary off the books, and, uh, you know, he wasn't going to do us any good. Tyler Roberts was uh, just kind of dead weight when making the squad, so we pick up $1.4 million for him. Not a bad pickup. It's about half his value, but his contract was up at the end of the year. Patrick Bamford, uh, I hated to do this, but with Guiri coming in, he was expendable. Crystal Palace came in. A couple of clubs came in, but Palace offered 3.3. I think West Ham made an offer at about... Two seven, so uh, I went with uh, Crystal Palace. So we pick up three point three for Patrick there, and certainly wish him luck. Dominic Grief, we had signed him at the beginning of the season for eight hundred and fifty thousand. We double up our money for one point six, sending him on to Southampton. We gave him a couple of starts, and he just looked horrible. He was playing sixes, six twos. I think he had the one game he had a five eight. Even on his internationals, he was not playing well from a rating perspective. So I don't know if it was just him. It'll be interesting seeing him at Southampton, still in England, still in the Premier League, if he performs better for them. Maybe it was a Leeds thing. Maybe it was an England thing. He wasn't able to assimilate into the into the English football. Don't know. Uh, Mateus Click, again, he had fallen down the pecking order. I really like him. But we got a nice offer from Shahab Al-Ahil for $10.75 million, so we sold him. Same with Adam Forshaw last year of his contract. Uh, Swansea jumped in to pick him up here midseason up to 37000 And Stuart, Stuart McKinstry uh, was not getting playing time out on loan. We recalled him, and then Cardiff came in with a loan fee uh, to go back out on loan. So hopefully he gets some first-team football that he needs. On the flip side, we have not signed anybody. <laughs> we do have a couple of offers out, and uh, we're waiting on uh, T Tomaso Barbieri from uh, Juventus. Uh, he, for a loan. Alex Robles, don't know if we're going to take this one. This is a young Spanish uh, right back. We've got a contract offer. We're waiting on word for his work permit. Same thing on Rody De Beer. I think I pronounced that right. De Beer, De Bear. I don't know. If you're Dutch, let me know. It's a pronunciation thing for me. Um, 24 years old. He could be first choice, but we're waiting on work permit for him. Robles hasn't accepted our contract yet, so we kind of need him to pick up the pace here. Uh, but uh, also in club finances, we are currently on 17 million available, about 13 million in payroll room, but I just can't find anybody. I can't find anybody that is showing as an upgrade to the club. And if we jump into scouting, you'll kind of see what I mean. Uh, now, some of these guys, now see, like they don't want to sell, but even he at two and a half star current, four and a half star potential is showing up as my fifth fifth choice defensive midfielder. So, you know, okay, Ivan's Ivan is a guy. Maybe I go after him. If De Beer can't do it, but he's Brazilian, I'm going to run into the same issue. No caps. He's not going to qualify for a work permit, even if he would be our first choice keeper. $24 million I can't afford. So people that I can afford, they're just not showing up very high on the list. You know, there's another fifth choice central mid. Doesn't do me any good. Second choice keeper, five and a half. Do I want to spend five and a half million on a second choice keeper? Probably not. So, and that's if I can get him as cheap as possible. So that's kind of what I'm running into is just most of the people that I, I'm finding through scouting aren't good enough to be first or second choice. So I'm like, why well, spend the money, right? So that's uh, that's the concern there. Let's go ahead and get back. This is the tactic that we've been playing. I brought in a tick attacka. They're not. They're getting better with it. And then this is another one I brought in. I actually want to try this one. We are at home. 
I haven't played this one yet. So Guiri and Rodrigo up top. Jones moving into that number 10, Shadow Striker. Rafinha and Dallas attacking on the wings. Uh, we have Tanali in support, deep lying playmaker. Sessignon, Koch, Urente, and Shackleton. I think we're going to go that route. That gives us a wide triangle. So let's go with it. Capriel's going to be uh, our, our reserve keeper with the move of grief. And we are off. Let's demand more. All right, Sessignon, Rodrigo. Into the box. He Oh, he's taken down hard. No penalty. And there's a shot by Rafinha who had drifted in to the middle. Fourth goal of the season. And that is a nice start in the sixth minute. I was surprised we didn't get a penalty there. But we got the goal anyway. So we'll take it. All right, they're on the attack in our end of the field. Oh, big reverse. Lots of space. And Melier makes the save. Not much pace on that ball. A header. Melier comes in with it. Oh, he was not blocked out. That was some poor defense. Over the top. Dallas is there. He makes a run. Drops it in, and there's a shot off the woodwork. You can see we're in eighth position just outside of Europe, and that's with the bad form we've been in. Let's demand more again. Uh, Shackleton misplays that. Up into Dallas. Uh, it's into Guiri, and he slots it home. That's number 11 on the season. The reason I wanted to go with this tactic uh, was because it has two strikers, so we can put Guiri and Rodrigo up top, and then that frees up some more people in the midfield. That was a nice through ball by Shackleton, and that's kind of what I was hoping for. All right, head it out. Tanali's going to run it down. Back into Rafinha. Tackled away. He's back on it. Over the top. Oh, almost. Rodrigo was making a charge into that ball. But Fabinski makes the play on it. Good job by the defense. I am playing an offsides trap in this one just to try it out. I haven't... Uh, Oh, there's a nice slot. Another one by Rafinha. He's got a brace. That is excellent work. Yeah, Shackleton ended up with a lot of assists last year, so very happy to see that. We're up to plus five on the goal differential, thankfully. Let's give him some praise here. A lot of happy faces. Denali back out to Shacks to the touchline. Jones chases it down, lifts it over. There's Shackleton. Oh, he's taken down hard in the box. Two shots. Curtis Jones is there for the second one, and he picks up his second goal of the season. Now Bournemouth, a lower part, you know, lower part of the table, bottom of the table. But you know, we've struggled with Southampton withdraws, Aston Villa we lost to. So maybe this is a tactic that we can play against the bottom half of the table teams and get some goals from. Something to think about. Dangerous ball. Oh, wow. Keeper went down for it. Who is that? Urente got a foot and knocked it out. That could have been dangerous, but it ended up being a good play. All right, there's a header out to Guiri. He's got lots of space. He does have one defender on him. Tackled away, but it's going to be a free kick and probably a yellow card there. Maybe. Can't tell. 
All right, Urente comes back on it. Plays it all the way back to Melier, who is way out of the box. Oh, my God. <laughs> the nerves are setting in from that. I still remember that goal from about three episodes back. All right, they stab the ball. They're on the attack. They've got some people in front. And there is a shot that goes off the mark. 4-0 heading into halftime. Cannot complain about that in the least. Rafinha, Rodrigo. They pair up again. Rodrigo to the touchline. And Guiri gets a tap in. If he's on sides, that's our fifth of the first half and his twelfth of the season. So let me ask you guys this. So I've been playing with a in-game tactic. I've brought in some FM20 tactics that I liked when we were struggling. But I'm seeing a lot of people talking about FM21 being too easy. Interested in your feedback down in the comments. Let me know what you guys think about that. All right, so demotivated, but I don't want them to get complacent. All right, we are going to give them some praise here in the early going. We build from the back. That's a poor ball. Some good one-touch one passing. Dallas is back to intercept that one. Oh, there's a ball in. Guiri cannot get to it. Oh, there's a nice through ball. Good save. Meslier with a big save. Gotta love that one. All right, head it out. Another header out. We're up to plus seven, so we're gaining ground on Man City in the goal differential department. All right, let's take a look at the sub window. So, real quick, I mentioned a couple of episodes back last week about a new podcast. And just to remind you, if you listen to podcast, it's called The Football Manager Show by The Athletic, which is a big national, uh, international uh, sports paper website. And they, uh, they are now doing a podcast with The Football Manager, and they are bringing in uh, episode one, of course, uh, had Miles. Episode two had one of their design guys and... Some very good information. So one of the one they talked about in episode two is the the little hearts here. And I know myself and several other creators that I watch have been talking about missing the numbers, but they had some good insight to it. They they didn't tell us what the programming was, how to interpret it, but basically as a real manager you would not know that the opponent's right back was at 58%. You could just tell maybe he was running a little slower, not as much accuracy on his passes, things of that nature. And that is what this is meant to simulate. So we don't know. We kind of have to guess by watching them play. So it's a little more in-depth and real. So that's the reason they went with this. So I'm going to bring off Tenali sitting on a yellow. I'm going to bring uh, Calvin Phillips on for there. And I really wish I had two, 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 central, two midfielders. But it is what it is. Having, I mean, everybody's playing well, right? I think I want to pull off um, Rafinha. Let's go ahead and put Jack out there, Jackie Harrison. All right, they've picked up a corner. 
Looks like that just went wide of the mark. I don't think Meslier got a hand on it. We're going to praise him again. Phillips takes this one. A header to the back door. It's Rodrigo for his fourth of the season. So another goal makes it 6-0 leads. And you have to be happy about the performance on this one today. Right back to a kickoff highlight. That's interesting. Nyambi gets through there. Over the top. And a save by Meslier goes up into the stands for a corner. All right, Harrison is... I don't know what all the faces mean. It's one of those things we'll have to get used to over the years. I just know red is not very good. Let's take a look at him. Complacent? Is that what that is? Yep, that is complacent. So can I... While we're paused here... Touchline shout focus. All right, that got up oh, and he went right back into complacency. Now, this is one of those things that if Bielsa was in charge in real life, he'd pull Harrison off, even though he subbed him here in the second half. Most people won't do that. All right, Dallas, let's bring on Koenicki, and that's going to replace both of our midfield wings. And we will coast in with the 6-0 victory. Got a question what that, uh, you know, exactly what that meant. Now, here's the weird thing. They had a they had an XG of 2.04, and we only had a 2.99, and we ended up with six goals. But they had, two, they had over a two and didn't get any. 18 shots, 10 on target. Very, very similar stats. So... Not sure how I like that, because if we're giving up two goals a game, oh, and we get a achievement for thumping. What is thumping? Your team won a competitive match by at least five goals, 35.5% of the players. Just taking a look at the last few, a rushed signing from a short-term focus, overachiever, you know, they should know who they're spam calling before they actually call. It was for Medicare supplement insurance. I'm not old enough to be on Medicare yet. Go figure. Nor is my wife. So that's funny. So we're, <laughs> we're in eighth position here. Big result. Big result. And let's see. Rafinha is one goal away from 10 goals, which means we'll pay another $2.6 million. We demolish Bournemouth. That we'll have to pay another 1.3. God, what's in his contract? Uh, contract info. I have no idea. It doesn't show you what the transfer clauses were. Transfers in. See, he doesn't even show up. But we're paying money out the ass for this guy. That's the, I guess the <laughs> I guess Leeds put that on the never never, and it's it's here. All right, Meslier actually got an 8.4 rating with 10 saves. Wow. All right, we'll be back for Man City, and that will also bring us to the end of the transfer window the day after that game. So we'll play the game. We'll finish out the transfer window and see anything that happened. See you guys back here in just a second. All right, we are back. Uh, the goalkeeper, De Beer, that we were after, no work permit, had to cancel. The guy playing for Juventus couldn't get a work permit for his loan, so rejected. So we haven't been able to sign anybody. Uh, I am going after two players. I'm only going to sign one because I can only afford one, and they're both very expensive. One was a $15 million bid. One's a $21.5 million bid. One can play central mid, defensive mid, and right wing. And the other can play all up from attacking midfielder all the way to fullback on the right-hand side and play them all very well. And either one of them 
I'm looking at being a slot in for Dallas and allowing Davis uh, Dallas to move back to left back possibly. So that's kind of what we're looking for. But this is what we're going to go with. We're going to keep this tactic. Rodrigo Guiri Jones up top. Rafinha and Dallas on the wings. Tenali in the deep, deep line. Playmaker role. Davis we're going to put in for Sessegnon on the left side. Stroik will come in to replace Koch in the mid, along with Urente. Shackleton back on the right. Meslier in. We're going to end up going with Capriel for our reserve keeper for the rest of the season because we couldn't sign anybody and nobody else looked any better. So that's what's going on there. We will hopefully see after the match which one of the two players that we get. The other thing I have done here is I have dropped the I've taken I've dropped the defensive line from much higher to higher and the same with the attacking line from much higher to higher. So we are doing that. And let's get into the match. And we're going to actually see a kickoff highlight. And they lump it. Meslier takes his time. Plays it out to Shackleton. All right. A lot of one-two passing here. There they find a ball out to Dallas, and it's stolen away and coming right back on us. Raheem Sterling cuts through, and he tried to ship it around the keeper, it looked like, but that did not go well. Somebody's grinding coffee beans in the kitchen, so too bad it's not smell vision Oh, nice ball out to Dallas here. Into the attack. Oh, he nutmegged him, it looked like. Offsides. Guiri, but I believe it's offsides. Going to VAR, and we know what that means. No goal. Disallowed. Offsides. And he was. Easy call there. But disappointing. I am encouraged that uh, that led to a goal there, though. Over the top. There's Guiri into the box. And that one goes wide of the mark. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, mm, yeah, we're going to man mark Raheem Sterling. I want to try that. I've, I've wondered. Oh, Rafinha, what was that? I've wondered if you could go in and play a man marking tactic where all your players man mark a specific position. And I wonder how that would work. I just think it would be a pain in the butt to do all the setup for it. <laughs> so that's why I haven't tried it. Kevin De Bruyne. Meslier, what a great save. He laid out for it, threw his body into traffic, and Raheem Sterling off the header. And there we go. Phil Foden puts in his fourth of the season. We are down a, sh a goal. Mm. That was a nice play. Let me make sure I did take off. No. I want to take off the offsides trap. Playing this. Playing a club that's better than us. A uh, set piece. This is dangerous. Oh my goodness, what a save. Headed out. Davis with a great sliding tackle on defense. There's a big header. Rodrigo comes to it and loses it. Odin with the toe to knock it away. 
Come on, boys. All right, let's do a shout here. Let's demand more. Oh, Rodrigo was not paying any attention. I don't. I think he may have been offsides, but boy, he responded late to that sh to that pass. Oh man, Julian Brandt was just left wide open inside the perimeter of that box, and we're down two nil. Hmm. All right, there's a ball up to Guiri. Back to Jones. Oh, he lays it into Rafinha. He had a good shot, but it is knocked away. I've got an idea. I might want to make a move tactically. Being that we appear that we're getting cut up in the mid... I think we may come out in the second half, and we may try something a little different here. All right, let's go to the dressing room. I want to go into the tactic. I'm going to change him to support. I am going to drop him back. But we're going to make him a Mazala on support. We're going to make him a deep-lying playmaker up here. Uh, I think on this one, let's make them true fullbacks instead of inverted wingbacks. Dallas. I'm going to move Dallas back to left back because he can play there. Davis we're going to bring off for Harrison. Davis wasn't playing badly. I just wanted, you know, just needed to make some moves. This one, really what I had in mind, I was thinking about, thinking about pushing these guys forward. That's more in line with what I was thinking. And maybe we'll go back to balanced. All right, so we make a halftime sub. We are going to demand more. Dallas with the arching throw. Hmm. Some good ball movement to get it up there in the box. Couldn't find the finish. Oh, De Bruyne just toe pokes it. And Foden, wide open, can't make the angle. We're still ahead of Tottenham on goals by five. All right, uh, Tanali. Let's bring on Phillips. And let's bring off Dallas or Sessignon, and that'll be our third and final sub. Kind of feel bad about making that other one now. Shackleton into the box. Harrison was with a good move to get in front of that to take the ball away. Oh, nice ball in. Harrison can't find the angle at the near post. Try to fire him up here. And head it out. They just hoof it down into the corner. Stroke can't get it over the defender's head. Oh, there's a ball in. Whoa, that was really, really close. Wow. If he would have gotten that down just a little bit, Mesley wouldn't have had a shot at it. He went full extension. There was no way. That was a long throw to the goalkeeper. Taken away. It's in. And Rodrigo, does it stand? I don't see anybody hanging out. And it's 2-1 leads. He did a really good job getting on that side. 
brilliant and let's drive this up to attacking De Bruyne good save by Meslier waning minutes of the match Rafinha he's got runners squared in oh my gosh Guiri if you would have been there for the putback No, that was poor. That was poor, Shax. Oh, I think that was a huge missed opportunity. Yeah, we can't be too mad. They played well. All right, that keeps us in eighth position, although Tottenham does have two in hand. Let's see if finishing out the day takes one of those away. It does, and they lost, so that's good. So they don't gain any ground on us. They are still one game in hand, as are a few teams below us. All right, well, let's finish up the transfers. So I will be back as any transfer news develops. Otherwise, we're going to end the episode. And we will be back in a handful of matches. All right, we've loaned out 20-year-old uh, fullback Cody Drama to uh, Preston till the end of the season. They're picking up 60% of his wages. Not a lot of money, just getting him some first-time football. All right, so we've got a few things. Ooh, hold on, Alioski. All right, this is important. All right, Robles's work permit was rejected, so we're going to cancel that. All right. Lavrik. Um, I I had forgotten to put him on the market. So we pick up $5 million for Christian Lavrik. So he is gone. We'll decline to talk about that. All right, let's jump in here and look at Alioski. We've got a couple of offers for him. And you know he's on my shit list. He's valued at a million. He's still a good player. You know, the funny thing is... Midfielder left. Yeah, see, he's behind so many people. Jack Harrison, Dallas, Rafinha. I just really don't need him. They're both 300000 But we'll accept all offers of a higher or equivalent value. All right, so he's sorted. And that's less up front, but it's the same over time. Got a mustache hair in my mouth, I think. Blech. All right, so let's look at our end guys. So I don't know which one to sign. Work permits have been accepted for both. I'm going to have to move some money around either way. All right, this guy's 20, and granted, we aren't really playing with him for a half season, so, but I still want to think about it long term. So he's right footed. He can play all four right positions. Very skilled. Six goals, two assists, a 7.3 rating in Portugal's first division with Braga. 13 goals, 141 matches. He's 28. The other guy is a true midfielder, so he can't play right back. But if he takes right wing, Dallas can move back and play left and right. He's only 25. He's not quite as good, but he's solid. We're talking $2 million more a year. 1.6. He's just got much better crossing. I think I got to go with Escayo. All right, so let's get back up into here. All right, Escayo has granted his work permit. Yes. All right, we need $22 million. All right, so let's go down here. We need 22 So we're going to go up to 25 just to make sure we got enough to cover it. And I should have done that before. Um, 
See, he's going to be so much easier to afford. But I want the other guy. I think we're fine. I think we're fine. I'm going to cancel this. He can be mad. Next on red. We already did those. Christian Lobrick goes. But we pick up some money from that. Alioski's out. All right. He signs with Derby. All right. Is this Hosanna loan? He's not playing for us. Yep. You can go out on loan. Carter Vickers. He just hasn't played much for us. He's not bad, and he is our third choice, I believe. Let's see, Koch, Urente. Eh, Stroik plays back there. You know what? We can free up some money and put more money in the bank. $6,000. Yeah, I'm going to reject that. I'm hoping I don't get screwed on this transfer. I don't like the fact that I'm in the transfer and it's not giving me the countdown window. There it is, 45 minutes. All right, so there's uh, S. Gallo. We're going to accept that. All right, we did have an offer in for a reserve keeper with Fulham. I had actually forgotten about him, uh, but Fulham could not find a replacement player, so we get screwed. Well, I just made one, you dumbass. <laughs> All right. Uh, ask Phillips to welcome him. Assign a squad number. What number do you want there, uh, buddy? He took number three. All right, so we'll submit that number. And we need to go into registration. Everybody else is under 21 and does not need to be listed. All right, so he's added under 21 confirm you must select at least 15 players fine all right we get a c grade on that boy those those numbers went way down not sure why that would be but it is what it is we'll just check out any transfer news that comes in you just saw that uh, team registration I just don't have to add anybody, guys. But you're making me. That's okay. All right. Well, that is it. Where are we going to come back at? We're down to our final couple of episodes. I think we come back uh, somewhere Liverpool Arsenal, we said, and then the season finale. So it's actually a good thing I missed the Brentford game because that's where we finish off. That one was rescheduled, I believe. So Brentford and Leicester to end the season. Liverpool Arsenal next episode. As we wind down the FM21 beta and uh, looking forward to the full release, which should be coming out on the 24th. And I think I've got it set up for my last beta episode to go up on the 24th. So then I will get uh, doing my plus 30 and then figuring out what team I'm going to go with. I believe we're going to start off with the single team save, and then uh, the second save of the year, which usually starts sometime in May or June, will be a Marcelo Bielsa-styled journeyman. That's kind of the game plan. And uh, we'll probably actually pick up from wherever we finish off with the single team save. That's what I did last year. So we'll keep going with that same database at that point. So we'll start off plus 30, and then we could be 60 years in by the time we start that second save. Anyway, hit that like button for me. That lets me know you like what you're seeing. It's the only way you can support the channel by getting word out uh, on my videos. Again, as I asked at the beginning of the video, please give me some feedback because I'm, I'm really starting to grasp at straws here, uh, starting to second guess myself on some things. But yeah, that's just par for the course, I guess. And uh, hey, we'll see you next episode. Have a good one, guys. Take care. Bye.